the hardware from this beautiful white finished Yamaha drum and I'm going to make it look like that this originally called pink sparkle by Yamaha which is really more of a rose gold finish don't you love autofocus it's so wonderful it's all great when nothing moves <laughs> okay so we're going to take this apart and we're going to sand the shell and then we're going to start uh, our finish work so yeah let's prep this shell with some 400 grit uh, this happens to be 500 but that should be okay Oh, we're ruining it. We just want to scuff that finish to accept the new paint. You can see where the gloss is and where the abraded finish is. So we're we're getting there. We just need to do a little bit more work um, with our four or five hundred grit, whatever you choose to use. Okay, now we get the old uh, double edge razor. This one is a shark. Just going to take this at a very, a very steep angle and catch the very right where the bearing edge begins, where the tape is laid down, and this is going to eliminate a lot of sanding after we've applied our finish and clean up around that bearing edge. You're just going to get a little bit of a little bit of messiness I suppose. But this will save us I think a lot of time. I'm not pressing too hard. I'm letting the razor do most of the work here. I suppose you could even sand this off, couldn't you? You know, you could just take a piece of sandpaper and you're just cutting through the um, tape, painter's tape. And then once I get this all removed, I'll peel this bottom piece of tape off. I'll show you that. And now that I've finished that, I can go ahead and peel my tape, if I did a good job, I'll go ahead and peel this right off. There it is. I, did, I got I cut into that tape a little bit right, yeah, if you can see it right there. No big deal. We'll just dress that with a file or some sandpaper when I'm complete with the, the spraying. There we are. And now what we have is we've got our bearing edge covered, right? It's going to save us a lot of time. Piece of paper on the inside. Uh, the holes are taped shut, okay? I'm not going to worry about putting any putty or anything in these. I'll just drill those out when I need to. Um, that's just a, a, um, a recess for the lug casing. And then this is a through hole. And then our badge holes. They can all, all, all be drilled if uh, there's too much paint that gets in them. So let's uh, finish doing this side and let's get straight away to uh, painting and sprinkling this with our, uh, our sparkle finish. That's hopefully going to look really close to this. This has faded. <laughs> it's more champagne like we all know and love than the um, what Yamaha called pink, um, which is again really more of a rose gold. Uh, from my memory, I'm looking for the picture I had when I originally got that drum kit and I cannot find it back in 1999. So I'm using Rust-Oleum glitter. This is uh, rose gold. That's gonna be the base coat for the drum. 
Then I took an old pill bottle, which I drilled with some one millimeter holes, and that will shake out my glitter in a fairly sparing manner. I believe that's the way I want to do it. I want some of the base coat to show through because this is a little bit better color than the, the actual glitter. And that's our tack coat. Let's wait, I don't know, five minutes? Now we got some color starting to build clearly. It takes about three coats before you'll even start that build. So we'll let that dry for another, I don't know, five minutes? And then we'll just layer up a ton of uh, layers of clear. Now I'm doing this with can lacquer, the, the clear, the glitter sealer, which is just uh, clear acrylic. If, if I were to do a whole drum set, like a 20 inch bass drum and some toms and everything, I would be using something like that. Since it was a small project, I just decided to go with the cans. This dries so quickly.
just want to say something these clear finishes like this is clear acrylic clear sealer for glitter paints there's no glitter in in this it's just clear um, likewise the stuff <clears throat> that does have glitter in it um, it's also an, uh, an acrylic so it dries very rapidly so that's why I'm kind of doing this as I go. I, I've, I've not done this kind of a finish before, ever, um, other than putting on wraps. And so spraying a little bit and sprinkling on our magic dust, um, is, it seems to be the way to go. But I've got something really cool I'm gonna show you quick here. And that's rolling this glitter to flatten it out. It really makes it pop nice. And I will show you that. This will have to sit for about 10 minutes or so, and then I can go take it to my flat granite slab with the wax paper on it. I'm gonna roll this now. You can hear those particles crunching down and flattening. It's no longer tacky. It's dry enough to, um, to work with. Dry to the touch. Preliminarily, anyway, that I crushed it <laughs> when it comes to the color match. This has just got a little bit of amber going on, and that's from age. And truth be told, I can easily tint this with a little gold color in the lacquer. That's not going to be a problem if I choose to do that. Of course, this has got more gloss and shine to it. This will have about 10 to 15 clear coats on it um, of the acrylic. That I'll put on it and get get all the hardware on it and get the badge the badges put on it and that's gonna look really great but that's that's about as I think as close as anybody would ever get to this uh, mash of this originally a 1999 Yamaha Maple Custom Absolute series in what they called pink sparkle more of a champagne or pink champagne sparkle this has got a little bit more pink like this originally had but well here is here is the uh, eight inch tom that was white and next to the the yamaha that came sprayed that color uh birch 
um, Stage Custom and Maple Custom Absolute Series from 1999. So I think it turned out really well. Um, the drums really do match quite nicely, as you can see. There's there's a little bit more sparkliness to this. They look like they go together. Pretty much. Pretty much look like they go together.